What role do you think luck plays in poker and in life? You can pick whichever one you want, poker or life and or life. The longer you play, the less influence luck has. You know, like with all things, the bigger your sample size, um, the more the quality of your decisions or your strategies matter. Um, so to answer that question, yeah, in poker, it really depends. If you and I sat and played 10 hands right now, I might only win 52% of the time, 53% maybe. Um, but if we play 10,000 hands, then I'll probably win like over 98, 99% of the time. So it's a question of sample size. And what are you figuring out over time? The betting strategy that this individual does, or it literally doesn't matter against any individual over time? Against any individual over time, the better player, because they're making better decisions. So what does that mean to make a better decision? Well, uh, to get into the real nitty-gritty already. Um, basically, poker is the game of math. Um, there are these strategies, familiar with like Nash equilibria, that yes. term, right? So there are these game theory optimal strategies that you, that you can adopt. Um, and the closer you play to them, the less exploitable you are. So because I've studied the game a bunch, um, although admittedly not for a few years, but back in, you know, when I was playing at the time, um, I would study these game theory optimal solutions and try and then adopt those strategies when I go and play. So I'd play against you and I would do that. And because the objective, when you're playing Game Theory Optimal, it's actually, it's a loss minimization thing that you're trying to do. Um, your best bet is to try and play uh, sim a sort of similar style. You also need to try and adopt this loss minimization. Um, but because I've been playing much longer than you, I'll be better at that. So first of all, you're not taking advantage of my mistakes. But then on top of that, I'll be better at recognizing when you are playing suboptimally and then deviating from this game theory optimal strategy to exploit your bad plays. Can you define game theory and Nash equilibria? Can we try to sneak up to it in a bunch of ways? Like, uh, what's the game theory framework of analyzing poker, analyzing any kind of situation? So game theory is just basically the study of decisions within uh, a competitive situation. Um, I mean, it's technically a branch of economics, um, but it also applies to like, deci like wider decision theory. Um, and, you know, usually when you see it, it's these like little payoff matrices and so on, that's how it's depicted. But it's essentially just like study of strategies under different competitive situations. Um, and as it happens, certain games, in fact, many, many games, um, have these things called Nash equilibria. And what that means is when you're in a Nash equilibrium, basically uh, it is not, there is no strategy that you can take that would be more beneficial than the one you're currently taking, assuming your opponent is also doing the same thing. Um, so it'd be a bad idea, you know, if we're both playing a, 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 in, you know, a game theory optimal strategy, if either of us deviate from that, now the other, you know, the, we're, we're putting ourselves at a disadvantage. Um, Rock, paper, scissors is actually a really great example of this. Like if we, to, were to start playing rock, paper, you know, you know nothing about me, and we're going to play for all our money, let's play 10 rounds of it. What would your sort of optimal strategy be? Okay. What would you do? Uh, let's see. I would probably try to be as random as possible. Exactly. You want to, because you don't know anything about me, you don't want to give anything about, away about yourself, so ideally you'd have like a little dice or somewhat perfect randomizer that makes you randomize 33% of the time each of the three different things. And in response to that, um, well, actually, I can kind of do anything, but I would probably just randomize back to, but actually it wouldn't matter because I know that you're playing randomly. Um, so that would be us in a Nash equilibrium um, where we're both playing this like unexploitable strategy. However, if after a while you then notice that I'm playing rock a little bit more often than I should. Yeah, you're the kind of person that would do that, wouldn't you? Sure, yes, yes, yes. I'm more of a scissors girl. But anyway. You are? Uh, no, I'm a, as I said, randomizer. Uh, so you notice I'm throwing rock too much, something like that. Right. Now you'd be making a mistake by continuing playing this game theory optimal strategy, because, well, the previous one, because you are now, uh, th there's an, th I'm making a mistake and you're not deviating and exploiting my mistake. Um, so you'd want to start throwing paper a bit more often um, in whatever you figure is the right sort of percentage of the time that I'm throwing rock too often. So that's, 
basically an example of where, you know, what, what game theory optimal strategy is in terms of loss minimization, but it's not always uh, the maximally profitable thing if your opponent is doing stupid, stupid stuff, which, you know, in that example. So that's kind of then how it works in poker, but it's a lot more complex. Um, and the way poker players typically, you know, nowadays they study, the game's changed so much, and I think we should talk about how it sort of evolved. Um, but nowadays, like the, the top pros basically spend all their time in between sessions running these simulators uh, using like software where they do basically the Monte Carlo simulation, sort of doing billions of fictitious self-play um, hands. You input a fictitious hand scenario like, oh, what do I do with Jack-9 suited on a King-10-4 two, two spades board um, uh, and, and, you know, against this bet size. So you'd input that, press play, it will run its, its uh, you know, billions of fake hands and then it will converge upon what the game theory optimal strategies are. Um, and then you want to try and memorize what these are. Basically, they're like ratios of how often, you, you know, what types of hands uh, you want to bluff and what percentage of the time. So then there's this additional layer of inbuilt randomization built in. Yeah, those, those kind of simulations incorporate all the betting strategies and everything else like that. Yes. So they, so as opposed to some kind of very crude mathematical model of what's the probability you win just based on the quality of the card, uh, it's including everything else too, the, the game theory of it. Yes, yeah, essentially. And what's interesting is that nowadays, if you want to be a top pro and you go and play in these really like the super high stakes tournaments or tough cash games, if you don't know this stuff, you're going to get eaten alive in the long run. Yeah. But of course, you could get lucky over the short run, and that's where this like luck factor comes in, because luck is both a blessing and a curse. If luck didn't, you know, if there wasn't this random element and there wasn't the ability for worse players to win sometimes, then poker would fall apart. You know, the same reason people don't play chess uh, professionally for money against you. Know, you don't see people going and hustling uh, chess, like not knowing, uh, try, trying to make a living from it, because you know. There's very little luck in chess, but there's quite a lot of luck in chess.